Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how you can easily manage your files on Amazon S3. If you're anything like me, you started with Amazon S3 when you heard all the good reviews, you heard people were using it, you heard it was secure, you wanted to get started, you signed up, and then what do you do next? You're not left with a simple to use interface like a lot of other software, it's not like cPanel where you have File Manager. Um, and if you've used an FTP program, maybe you got used to that, but it's still kind of not got anything that works like that out of the box. So what I discovered was this solution called Cloudberry Explorer, and you can get that from cloudberrylab.com. Now, they have a couple different versions of the product. There's S3 Explorer Freeware, and there's S3 Explorer Pro. Now, there are benefits to the Pro version. Um, so there's encryption, there's multi-threading, multi-part upload. So just a, a variety of features that will help make the software more secure, faster to upload files, and just more powerful overall. But in this quick video, I'm just gonna show you how you can install and set up the freeware version. So you click on the freeware option, you hit to download, it will automatically download that to your computer. And this will just take a few seconds. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install and actually get started managing your Amazon S3 files in a more efficient way. So it's just a couple seconds left here, and then we're going to click on the downloaded file. We're gonna confirm with Windows that we want to run it, and then allow it to install. It brings up the Cloudberry Explorer, so we just hit next. Read through the extensive license agreement, which of course everybody always reads, and click that you agree with that, and confirm that you want to install the software. And then that will just go through all the processes to get it set up, so you hit finish, and it will launch the Cloudberry Explorer platform. So as you can see, it's just loading there. And if I resize it once it opens, so that I can show it to you. And there, so. Here we have the Cloudberry Explorer um, set up. As you can see here on one side it has on one side it has your computer, on the other side it has all of your buckets. So a bucket is essentially like a directory um, or a, a kind of hard drive for your for your online files. Now this is already connected with my Amazon S3 account because I've had it installed before. If I hadn't, you can just click on this source area and then add a new Amazon S3 account. So as you can see here, you put in a display name, so something like my Amazon bucket, and then you would add your access key and your secret key here. And these are all given to you from the standard Amazon S3 dashboard. And once that's set up, you can just click OK to confirm. But in this instance, I've already got one installed, so I'm just going to cancel. And then click into, I'm going to click into the bucket that I want to access. And I'm going to upload a file from my desktop. So I'm going to click on the file on my desktop and then simply drag it into the area that I want to upload it. And then once I release, it's, do I, it asks if I want to upload the item, I say yes, and then I'll automatically queue the file for upload. As you can see, it's just a really simple way of adding your files to your Amazon S3 server, managing everything so you can keep your files secure, scalable, and accessible on the web. So it's just gonna take a few seconds here. As you see, it's a eight meg file, so it's taken, so I'll just pause this while it uploads the rest. Okay, and it's just uploading the last couple of percent and there it should have been completed. So it's just refreshing and now my file has been added successfully to the, to the, the hosting, to the bucket, the Amazon S3 account. So in this area, you, if you right click onto any file, you can you can control the access control level settings. So right click on that and it will take you through to the different options. Now this is something that confuses a lot of people. So initially 
you would want to make things private or have only authenticated users, but there are various ways that you can do this and they're not always accessible. So a lot of people end up just putting it on public so everybody can read, write and access. And this is actually a mistake in a lot of um, situations because it means that literally everybody can uh, read your read your files. So if you're trying to protect content in a membership area or if it's only for customers and then everyone's getting access with the direct links, then things are, obviously you're not protecting yourself to the fullest. You're not gonna get the most value out of your product offering. So what you really want to do where possible is have it for a private um, installation of that file and then only authenticated um, use of that is allowed. And one plugin that I use that works great with WordPress to do that is I'll set it to private in here and then I'll use the S3 Flow Shield plugin, um, which is really great for just offering streaming videos and protected download links within WordPress while still maintaining the private control on the Amazon S3 bucket. So as you can see here, I'm gonna choose a private control. I'm gonna click OK and that will change the access levels for me automatically. And then one other area of interest is if you right click on it again, if you ever need to get the full web URL, you can just click on the web URL link there and that will give you the link for it. So I'm just gonna copy that to clipboard, close. And then if I go back to my browser, you can see here is a blank window. I'm just gonna paste in that link that it gave me. And if I hit enter, you can see access is denied. So what I've actually done by setting that to private is even if people have the direct link to my file to download, they still can't actually download it unless they're an authenticated user. And as I mentioned before, the software that I use to do that is something called S3 Flow Shield. And again, if you want to actually get that yourself, you can find it at the S3 Flow Shield website. So HTTP uh, semicolon or sorry, colon forward slash forward slash link for dot biz forward slash S3 Flow Shield. So that's just a, a little aside. If you are using WordPress and you want to have those authenticated links, otherwise you will have to use another piece of software or keep your access links to readable by all users but this is not secure so if you want members only content customer only content you are going to use want to use something like an s3 flow shield in coordination with the cloudberry explorer for amazon s3 which you can get for free so i hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial as you can see it's really really simple way for managing your files you can explore your whole computer on the left and just drag and drop or you can drag and drop files from your from your actual desktop from your files on your computer as well so really really simple file management really accessible really secure when used with s3 flow shield as well and um, which you can get from s3 flow shield at link 4biz forward slash s3 flow shield and once again the website for cloudberry is cloudberrylab.com so i hope you enjoyed this short tutorial and i'll talk to you again soon